Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we'll see how to run your first combat in Roll20. Now, this video builds on a previous one that I did that showed how to set up your first encounter, and I'll pop a card to that video, so if you haven't seen it yet, you might want to check it out before watching this one. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Alright, so our cleric Zerakiel has just stumbled into this cave filled with goblins and a fight is about to break out. So the first thing that you as the DM need to do is open up the turn order window. You do that by clicking this button right here. And the turn order window houses all of the initiative values that your combatants roll. So let's roll some initiative for our goblins. To do that, we're going to open up the goblins character sheet, we're going to click on the goblins token, and we can either click on the initiative button, and that will roll initiative and add the goblin's name and initiative value to the turn order. Or you can also just click on the goblin's name in the character sheet, and that will roll initiative for them as well. And I'm just going to repeat that process for all the goblins on the battlefield. There we go. And so now I have all my goblins in the turn order window. While that's going on, my players can be rolling initiative for their characters as well. And so Zerakiel is going to roll initiative, and we can see that he has rolled an 11. Now, once initiative has been rolled, what I like to do is sort the initiative order so that the highest number is going first. You can do that by clicking this sort button once and then twice, and now all the initiative values have been sorted from the highest to lowest. You can also do this by clicking on the gear icon and then choosing sort options, descending or ascending, depending on what kind of game you're playing. Okay, so we can see that there are two goblins who are going to go, and then Zerakiel, and then the other two goblins. But how do we know which goblin is which? Well, if you hover over an entry in the turn order window, Roll20 draws a yellow box around the token that corresponds to the entry in the turn order window. So this goblin has initiative 19, this goblin over here on the right has initiative 18, the one down the bottom has 11, and so on. So I know this goblin is going first, so I want him to attack Zerakiel with his short bow. The way that we're going to do that is by, again, opening up his character sheet, and then we can just click on the short bow action here. When we do that, it makes our roll over here on the right, and we can see that the goblin has rolled an 18 for our attack. Zerakiel's armor class is an 18, so the goblin has hit. And so if I click on the attack link right here, it will roll damage. And I can see that Zerakiel will have taken 6 points of piercing damage. And Zerakiel's player will update that on Zerakiel's character sheet. Okay, so that goblin's turn is done. I'm going to click the advance button to move to the next character in the turn order. And that's going to be that goblin who is over on the right-hand side of the screen. I'm going to minimize the character sheet by double-clicking on it here. And so this goblin is up next. This goblin can't get line of sight on Zerakiel because this wall is in the way. So what I'm going to do is move the goblin, and the goblin can move 30 feet based on its speed. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to have it dash with its action, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, to behind this pillar here. And then I want the goblin to use a bonus action to hide, as that's one of its abilities here, Nimble Escape. So to make a skill check, what we can do is click on the skills section right here. And now we see that the goblin rolled a nat 1, so he's only got a 7 on that hide check. So it's really highly likely that Zerakiel's going to be able to see him. But that's that goblin's turn. He can't do anything else. So we're going to advance now again, and it's Zerakiel's turn. So Zerakiel's player says that they want to target this goblin right here and they're going to cast Sacred Flame. So Zerakiel will make that attack roll. It shows up in our chat, and we can see here that our goblin needs to make a DC 17 Dexterity save, or they're going to take 10 points of Radiant Damage. And Zerakiel's targeting this goblin right here, so we're going to make our Dex save. The goblin fails the Dex save, and so he's going to take 10 points of Radiant Damage. Now, when you deduct hit points from a monster, you can click right on their bubble right here and then put in the math to reduce their hit points. So we can say minus 10. And we can see now that reduces the goblin to less than 0 HP. So this goblin is now dead. So what I can do is mark them as such by clicking on this little button right here. 
And when I click on that button, I can select this dead marker. And now that displays that this goblin is dead on the battlefield. You can also highlight a creature's token and press the backspace or the delete key to remove them from the map, but I like to leave them on the battlefield with the dead marker so that my players know that there are bodies that could be looted after the fight ends. Now, that was Zerakiel's action was casting Sacred Flame, and that was a cantrip, so Zerakiel could cast another spell that was a bonus action, and Zerakiel's player says that they would like to cast Spiritual Weapon, as well. And so Spiritual Weapon has a range of 60 feet. And Zerakiel says that he would like to place the Spiritual Weapon next to this goblin right here. So if we want to measure and make sure that Zerakiel has enough range to do that, we can click on this measuring tool right here. And then when we do that, we can choose the line tool. And then we can draw a line, click and hold, and draw a line from Zerakiel down to this goblin, and we can see that it's 45 feet away, so Zerakiel has enough reach in order to cast the spell and place his spiritual weapon next to this goblin. So we'll click on the select tool now again, and I have a spiritual weapon icon over here in my art library, this blue morning star here. I'm going to drag that out onto the battlefield and set it next to the goblin, and then Zerakiel is going to make an attack roll with the spiritual weapon. That shows up in our chat. We can see that Zerakiel rolled a 20, which hits this goblin that has an armor class of 15. And he dealt 7 points of force damage, which is enough to kill this goblin as well. And so I'll mark this one as dead. Now Zerakiel's spiritual weapon is going to stick around for 10 rounds and does not require concentration. And I want a way to keep track of how many rounds the weapon has been on the board. So what I'm going to do is click on the gear icon in the turn order window here, and I'm going to add a custom item called spiritual weapon, and I'm going to set its round calculation field to minus one. And then we're going to say add. Now what that does is adds the spiritual weapon into the turn order with a value of zero. I'm going to set that to 10 and press enter, and then we can actually drag this up in the turn order window so that it's right underneath Zerakiel. And so now what's gonna happen is as we advance the turn order, the spiritual weapon counter will automatically reduce by one, saying it's staying on the board for another nine rounds. We're gonna continue on through the tracker here, and then now it's on the board for eight more rounds and so on. So this is just a great way for us to keep track of certain effects that are on the battlefield so we don't need to keep it in our heads. So we come back to our goblins, and at this point I think the remaining goblins are probably just going to make a break for it, and they're going to flee from Zerakiel. Now, if at any point in time you want to remove an entry from the turn order window, so like for example this goblin here which is dead, we can just click on the trash can icon, and that will remove the goblin from the turn order. We'll do the same thing for this one. And so now the only items that are remaining in our turn tracker are the characters and monsters who are actually still participating in combat. Once combat is over, click on the gear icon again, and you can remove all turns to clear the turn order window completely, and then close this, and your party is ready to continue their adventures. So there you have it. That's how to run your first combat in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks. Have a great day.